I heard you talking about in one interview where you talked about uh, you were having a meeting and the devil was there and somebody mentioned the name of Jesus. And, and I want you to share that experience because somebody might be watching that is in the old cult and mm-hmm. they feel like that's the end of power, you know, like that's the most powerful thing in the world. But can you share that experience to let somebody know that there's a power that's greater than the power oh, of the old cult? Oh, yeah. I mean, I never... When I started going to the occult, we looked at the devil as the final authority. Mm. You know, and to see the devil, there are certain things you are going to have to do before you can see him. Uh, you can see him, but you are going to have to go through some kind of uh, a qualifying process. And I remember in my case, they said I had to do 27 things. But by the time I did the 24th thing, they were convinced that I was ready. Some of those things could involve fasting, going to the cemetery, could involve making some sacrifices, you know. And I did that. By the time I did the 24th thing, they said, oh, you're okay now. So they took me to many of the meetings in those days, uh, but I was not allowed to speak, you know. Uh, let me say something to you about the occult, which people don't understand. You see, in the occult, when you get there, you don't get there as a human being. <laughs> it's a spiritual. You will be somewhere as a human being, but you don't come there as a human being. You come there as a disembodied, disembodied spirit, which means your spirit and soul goes there. Now, and then you have a process that you have to go there with. If it puts your feet against the wall or you... you, That's why occulty people don't want to be in the same way with somebody else. Because if they go for a meeting with some, uh, for, for a meeting and they are in the room with someone else and the person moved them away from the place where they are, when they want to come back, they will not be able to come back into their body. And eventually that leads to death. Some people sleep and they don't wake up, occulty people and all of that. So I met the condition and uh, they took me into a few, you know, and then in the occult, if someone is speaking, let's say I'm speaking and I'm from, um, I'm from Argentina. Yes. And probably I'm speaking Portuguese or I'm from Brazil and I'm speaking Portuguese and I start off to speak Portuguese. A person from France will hear me in French. I will be speaking Portuguese, but you'll be hearing me in French. The translation is taking place. It's automatically in the spirit. It's a spiritual communication. What limits our understanding of what someone else is saying is our body, our humanity. So when that is taken out of the way, communication is smooth. You know, it's like when God is speaking to you, he speaks in English, or he speaks in Yoruba, or he speaks in uh, Edo, yeah, yeah. depending on the kind of person you are. So he's not limited by language. And so in the occult, when they speak to you, uh, the, the, the person will just be speaking, I can just stand up and be speaking in uh, probably the language of the island and from uh, Vanuatu, and you'll be hearing me in your language. So there's no barrier, as it were, because what happens at the Tower of Babel is a confusion of the language, and the time is going to come when that so that was what happened on the day of Pentecost. You know, people said they had them in their own language. Not that they were speaking their language. They were speaking in whatever language they were speaking, in, but they had them in their own language. So I went there and quite a number of very intriguing things and very interesting things. You see people that you know in life, you know? Yeah. You know them in life, you know, but you can't call them, you can't, you can't call them like I call you like I'm speaking to you now, you have a way of communicating, you know, telepathically. Actually, actually when you look at them, they drawn, there's a way in which you draw, that somebody's looking at you, so you look. You see yourself, you recognize each other. But unless that communication is necessary for that gathering, you don't cheat chat. So you don't sit and be gossiping, that's not the gossip about, you know. That's the, you are there for the meeting, and the meeting is primary. So I went to this other meeting, and uh, <laughs> the devil, as usual, was the chairperson, was high and lifted up, you know. The devil is very handsome. You know, when I see some pictures of the devil that people draw, I, I just laugh. People don't know how the, the devil is a very, very beautiful creature. You know, they, they, they play the devil with horns. No, he doesn't have no horns. I think that's scriptural too, right? Yeah, uh, he's not just the color. Yes, yeah. his, his beauty was... So when I got there, I mean, there was beauty so big, and his voice was so good. You see, his voice was... So good that when you hear it, you mesmerized. You know, and he just speaks straight, he just says one or two words, one or three words. So that day we were scheduled, all of us were there. You don't sit, you stand in the spirit, there is no such position. 
the sitting, the standing, in the physical is what called a skeleton. Now there's no skeleton, you know. So, so you can just just stand or float or anything. Yeah. You're just there, you know. And it's always in the night. <laughs> and not, that's why the father has no light. Everybody sees everybody. You know, I will see you even clearly, more clearly than I'm looking at you. And you know, the meeting will start. Normally, when they say something supernaturally echoed, no microphone, nothing, but supernaturally echoed. I was telling people, I said, when I see Jesus Christ preaching and no microphones, and they say 5,000 men apart from women and children, I said, but now this is a microphone. We can't speak to more than 200 people, 300 people. I said, <laughs> I said so some of these things were supernatural programmed and all that. So that day we were there, and then uh, someone stood up from Peru. Lima, I can't forget. Said, and then before you speak, you introduce yourself. I am so and so and so and so. Now the name you are going to use is an occultic name. It is the name they recognize. In the body, I have my name George. In the occult, that's not my name. I have my name, which I was given when I joined the occult. So that when I'm discussing someone else, you wouldn't know except you're a part of the occult. So. So they just, uh, the man says, I'm from, I'm from Lima. And um, there is something strange that is happening in our country nowadays. See, there are a group of people, and um, they, are, they, they are always calling one name, and it's causing a lot of disruption to our operation. And the name they have been calling is Jesus, Jesus. I can't forget. He said it twice. The devil screamed. You know, the kind of scream you scream out of fear. The hopeless shook. Yeah, God in heaven. What's this? I was thinking, why is he, why is he shouting? What, what, what's this not making about? Somebody's name, they just called you. The person is not here. They called the name in Peru. You are shaking here. <laughs> what, what, what kind of a devil are you? <laughs> I mean, you don't say devil anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a head are you? Mm -hmm. So, when they said that, and then um, when he screamed, I was wondering. And then, he never said anything. There was a great ominous quiet. Then all of a sudden, from nowhere, a ball of fire ran about this size. Came from nowhere and came and stood in the center of where we are all gathered. gathered. That's the end. Because we cannot operate in light. That's why it says the light shines in darkness. darkness, darkness the continue. darkness does not comprehend. The darkness covers the whole earth and gross darkness the people. So many lab is automatical adjournment. It's not, they won't tell you, you just know it's over. Yes. The meeting is over. Wow. You know? And that is why anything that shines light, like gospel, truth, honesty, it cannot conceal. The devil is always trying to conceal, always trying to hide, always trying to obstruct, to cover. But you see anything that exposes the Holy Spirit, that unveils, anything that reveals is not a friend of the occult. That's why one of the greatest evil you can commit in the occult is to reveal their secrets. Man. Now, occult took that from God. God seeth in secret. He lives in secret. Mm. He that dwells in the secret place, okay? Yeah. So the occult took that, and it's one of their modus operation right. and all of that. They, everything, they try to conceal it. Mm. They don't try to say it out. So, and uh, when that script came, I said, what's, what's going on here? I mean, I'm... I just felt like, what's going on here? So the person next to me just said uh, he was going. I said, OK. Now, and then another thing, in the occult, no male, no female. You wouldn't know who is a male or female, because they are spirits. You understand? Except if it's a special meeting for females, then you know everybody's female. But even when you see male and female, our spirits don't have a she or he no, to eat. Sure. You see, so I knew quite a number of things just being the occult, you know? I, I was expecting to see ladies dressed in, but nobody came there with their body. They came there with their shape. And the shape is a spiritual shape, you know. It's not something you can grasp with your hand. Your hand can't grasp it, you know. So we went and, uh, and the, that day I was just saying, ah, that person whose name they called, I, I want to meet the person. Why should I be, you know? I didn't even know it had anything to do with church, mm. you know? I, I, I never even mind that the name of what they call was a church thing. Because I just felt that I said Lima and calling and you are shaking. And that started me 
to the way that eventually brought me to the saving knowledge of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because when I eventually asked about what Jesus was, they said, well, he's the righteous one. You don't say Jesus. You don't say, you just, you just, just call that name. You just refer it to the righteous. So even when we have meetings and people are having issues with all those things, they use such words and terminologies. They do not use um, a word like Jesus. You, you can't. That was a mistake, a gross abuse. And the person who coordinated the people from Peru was sanctioned for not teaching that young disciple How to, uh, the right thing to say, not to say at such a meeting, you know, and the right words to use and not to use. And, you know, the devil's punishment is always absolute. They will say punish and reprieve, no reprieve. The punishment could be all kinds of things. They could make you lose your job in the natural they could make you lose your house. They could make you lose your wife. You could lose your child. The punishment is very painful. Yeah. You know, it's very painful. You know, God has time shows mercy. But the devil doesn't know anything about mercy. There's nothing like mercy with Satan. So, and so that was what intrigued me. And then I started saying, I want to, Jesus, Jesus. At times I would sit down in the dark and say, trust in me. So when I became a child of God, I now know the name of Jesus. You know, and I know the name of the Lord is a strong tower. At the mention of the name, every knee bow. Every, I said, wow, wow, just the name? But that was how I became very interested in the way of the Lord and eventually I came to know the Lord. Yeah. One more question about the occult before we go into... Yeah. Um, so this said, I, I think my dad told me this story that... Um, in the Yoruba religion, yeah, Ifa that actually recognizes that the name of Jesus, mm. I think it's called Ifaela or something. I forget how it's referred. Uh -huh. So somehow in the in the religion uh -huh. of Yoruba, uh -huh. they recognize that there's somebody called the righteous one. I don't know whatever yes. name, whatever we'll name it, yes, yes. whatever name, but, but they've those who worship that yes. know that. They may not serve him, but they recognize oh, yes. that. Even be this is way before uh, Christianity came to yeah. Africa, uh. that we, we they were able to to work to to do their religion up to the point that it got to the point where they recognized Jesus yeah. Christ. They are mediators. You see, the Ifa priest, the Shango priest, the Oya priestess, or whoever see themselves as intermediaries between Jesus and man. But you see, Jesus is intermediary between man and God. Yes, but they will let you understand that this other person is the God who sent him. So you can't go to him. Mm. Nobody goeth to him except through us. Yes. And so people, we are compelled to go through them. Now, I went to a place. After I had that experience, I went to a place. And this man did some portions for us, like, you know, medicine and all of that juju that we should carry. Then he said this in Yoruba language. I said, Oluwake, who is that? I said, I came to you for the resolution of my situation. She said, no. He said, she's a man intermediary. Wow. I only receive what you have to ask the gods from. And I go to present it to the gods. And if the God accepts it, you see the result. And so people came to believe this being, hmm. who are also being, but of a higher order, by reason of whatever they have come to know. Yeah. They come to believe in them and trust them. And so they entrust into their hands, pay them dues or whatever, and assume and believe that they take this to a higher power, which is not so. They are the one doing whatever they are doing. Absolutely. And then they mess you up, they do anything to you, and you think, well, it's the person who did not clear in them. No. In other words, they, they, they do it and put the blame away from themselves to focus on someone else, mm. which is not true. Because they are the people responsible. They are the negative forces. It's a go, or yeah, and all these people who kill and steal and destroy. Mm. But they give you the impression that uh, they're having to report to a higher powers. You know, you know, so that is it. And uh, so if you're not careful, you come to trust them hmm. and you come to put your confidence in them, you know, and their lying vanities. When you put your trust and confidence in such people, they can't help you yes, sir. because they themselves can't even help themselves. Yeah. 
But you see, if you are not careful, but they, in, the, in the real thing, they will tell you, yes, we know there is something like that. But we are just messengers. Exactly. We are just intermediaries. Come to us, we'll take you to him. That's the impression. 